Hello 4S. Today we are going to read chapter 8 of our class novel, Kensuke's Kingdom, and I'm hoping today we might find out a little bit more about Kensuke, because remember he promised Michael he was going to tell him his story, so let's see if that's what happened today. Chapter 8. Everyone Dead in Nagasaki. I was overjoyed. I had found a part of me that I thought I'd lost forever. Now, Kensuke said, beaming at me, now you very happy person, Micah-san. I happy too. We go fishing. I tell you very soon where I find this ball. Very soon I tell you everything. Little fish not good now, not so many. We need big fish sometimes from deep sea. We smoke fish, then we always have plenty fish to eat, you understand? The outrigger was a great deal heavier than it looked. I helped Kensuke drag it down the beach and into the sea. This very good boat, he said, as we lifted Stella in. This boat never go down. I make myself very safe boat. He pushed us off and jumped in. I never ceased to be amazed at his extraordinary agility and strength. He rowed with a single oar, standing at the stern of the boat, more as if he were punting. Very soon we were out beyond the shelter of the cave and into the swell of the open sea. Clutching my beloved ball and with Stella at my feet, I sat watching him and waiting for him to begin his story. I knew better than to pester him by now. The fishing came first. We baited our lines and settled silently to our fishing, one over each side of the boat. I was bursting to ask him about the football, how he'd found it, but I dared not, for fear he would climb up and say nothing. It was some time before he began, but when he did, it was well worth waiting for. Now I tell you everything, Micah son, he said, like I promise. I am old, but it is not a long story. I'm born in Japan, in Nagasaki, very big town by the sea. I grew up in this town. When I young man, I study medicine in Tokyo. Soon I am doctor, Dr. Kensuke Ogawa. I'm a very proud person. I look after many mothers, many babies too. My first person many babies see in the world. Then I go to London. I do studies in London. Guy's Hospital. You know this place? I shook my head. Of course, I learned to speak English there. Afterwards, I came back to Nagasaki. I have beautiful wife, Kimi. Then I have a little son too, Mikaya. I'm a very happy person in those days, but soon war comes. All Japanese men are soldiers now, sailors maybe. I go to Navy, I dock her on big warship. A fish tugged on his line and took his bait, but not the hook. He went on as he rebaited his hook. This war very long time ago now. I did not know, I did know something about a war in Japan. I had seen it on films, but I knew very little about it. He shook his head. Many die in this war. This war, very terrible time. Many ships go down. Japanese army win many battles. Japanese navy win many battles. All Japanese, very happy people. Like football. Like when you win, you happy. When you lose, you sad. I go home often. I see my Kimi and my little Mikaya in Nagasaki. He grow fast, already big boy. We all very happy family. But war go on a long time. Many Americans come, many ships, many planes, many bombs. Now war is not so good for Japan. We fight, but we lose. Very bad time. We are in a big sea battle. American planes come. My ship is bombed. There is fire and smoke, black smoke. Many men burned, many men dead. Many jump off ship into sea. But I stay. I am doctor. I stay with my patients. Planes come again. Many more bombs. I think I am dead person this time for sure. But I'm not. I look all round ship, all patients dead, all sailors dead. I'm only person alive on ship. The engine is still going, ship moving on her own. She go now where she want to go. I cannot turn wheel, I can do nothing. But I listen to radio. Americans say on radio, big bomb fall on Magasaki. Atomic bomb. Many dead. A very sad person. I think Kimi dead. Mikaya dead. My mother lived there too, all my family. I think they all dead. Soon, radio say Japan surrender. i so sad I want to die. He fished in silence for a while before he began again. Soon engines stop, but ship not go down. Big wind come, big storm. I think I die for sure now. But sea take ship and bring me here, on this island. Ship come onto beach, and I'm still not dead. Very soon I find food. I find water also. I live like beggar man for a long while. Inside I feel bad person. I think all my friends dead, all my family dead, and I alive. I do not want to live. But soon I meet orangutans. They're very kind to me. This very beautiful, very peaceful place. No war here. No bad people. I say to myself, Kensuke, you're a very lucky person to be alive. Maybe you stay here. I take many things from ship. I take food. I take clothes, sheets. I take pots. I take bottles. I take knife. I take binoculars. I take medicine. I find many things, many tools also. I take everything. 
When Kensuke finished, I'm not much left on the ship, I tell you, I find cave. I hide all things in cave. Soon terrible storm come and ship go on rocks. Very soon she go down. One day American soldiers come. I hide, I not want to surrender. Not honourable thing to do. I'm very afraid too. I hide in forest with orangutans. Americans make fire on beach. They laugh in the night. I listen, I hear them. They say everyone dead in Nagasaki. They're very happy about this. They laugh. I'm very sure now I stay on this island. Why go home? Soon Americans, they go away. My ship underwater by now, they not find it. My ship's still here, under sand now, part of island now. The rustling hull I had found that first day on the island. So much was beginning to make sense to me now. A fish took my line suddenly, almost jerking the rod from my grasp. Ken Suk leaned across to help me. It took many minutes of heaving to bring the fish to the surface. But between us, we managed to haul it in. We sat back exhausted as it floundered at the bottom of the boat, at our feet. It was massive, bigger even than the biggest fish I'd ever seen. The pike my father had caught in the reservoir back home. Ken Suk dispatched it quickly, sharp blow to the back of the neck with the handle of his knife. Good fish, very good fish. You very clever fisherman person, Micah. We're good together. Maybe we catch more now. But it was many hours before we caught another, though it did not seem like it. Ken Suk told me all of his life, alone on the island, how he'd learned to survive, to live off the land. He learnt, he said, mostly by watching what the orangutans ate and what they did not eat. He learned to climb as they did. He learned to understand their language, to heed their warning signals, the darting eyes, the nervous scratching. Slowly, he built a bond of trust and became one of them. By the time we made for home that evening, with three huge fish at the bottom of the boat, tuna, I think they were, his story was almost finished. He talked on as he rode. After Americans, no more men come to my island. I alone here many years. I not forget Kimmy. I not forget Micaiah. But I live. Then a year ago, maybe, they come. Very bad people. Killer men. They have guns. They hunt. They shoot. I sing to my orangutans. They come to me when I sing. They are very frightened. They all come in my cave. We hide. Killer men not find us. But in forest they shoot. You told me name. Gibbon monkeys. They shoot mothers. They take babies. Why must they do this? I'm very angry. I think all people kill a people. Hate all people. I think I not want to see people again. Then one day I need big fish to smoke. I go to this fishing boat. Wind blows wrong way. I go far out. Sea pulling me away very strong. I try to come back to my island. It is no good. I'm old. Arms are not strong. When night come, I'm still far away. I'm very frightened. I sing. It make me brave. I hear shout. I see light. I think I dream. Then I hear another song in sea, in dark. I come quick as I can. I find you and Stella and Ball. You very nearly dead person, my Cassan. Stella very nearly dead dog. So it had been Ken Su who had pulled me from the sea. Ken Su who had saved me. It had simply never occurred to me. In morning he went on. See, bring us again near my island. I'm very glad you're not dead. A very angry person too. I want to be alone. I not want to see people. For me, all people. Killer people. I not want you on my island. I carry you. I leave you on the beach. I leave you food. I leave you water so you not die. But you make fire. I want people to stay away. I not want people to find me here on my island. Maybe they come. Maybe they shoot orangutan, shoot gibbon monkey. Maybe they find me, take me away too. A very angry person. I put out fire. I not want to speak to you. I not want to see you. I draw a line in sand. Big storm come, biggest I ever see. After storm, sea full of white jellyfish. I know these jellyfish, very bad. They touch you, you very dead. I know this. I say, do not swim, very dangerous. Very soon, I see you make a big fire on top of hill. I think you very wicked person. I'm very angry now, and you very angry too. You swim in sea, jellyfish sting. I think for sure you dead person. But you're very strong. You live. I bring you into cave. I have vinegar. I make from berries. Vinegar kill poison. You live, Micah. But for a long time, you're very sick, boy. You're strong again, and we're friends now. We're very good friends. So that was it, the whole story. He stopped rowing for a while and smiled down at me. You are like sun to me now. We happy people. We paint, we fish, we happy. We stay together. You my family now, Micah San, yes? Yes, I said. I meant it and I felt it too. He let me take the oar and showed me how to row his way, standing up, feet planted well apart. It wasn't as easy as he made it look. Clearly he trusted me to get us back. For he sat back in the bow of the outrigger to rest and fell asleep almost at once, his mouth open, his face sunken. He always looked even older when he slept. 
As I watched him, I tried to picture his face as it must have been when he first came to the island all those years ago. Over 40 years. I owed him so very much. He had saved my life twice, fed me and befriended me. He was right. We were happy and I was his family. But I had another family too. I thought of the last time I had been in a boat, my mother and father, and how they must be grieving for me every day, every night. By now they must surely believe I had drowned, that there was no chance I could be alive. But I wasn't drowned. I was alive. Somehow I had to let them know. As I struggled to bring the outrigger back to the island that afternoon, I was filled with a sudden, powerful longing to see them again, to be with them. I could steal the boat, I thought. I could row away. I could light a fire again. But I knew, even as I thought it, that I could not do it. How could I ever leave Ken Suk now after all he had done for me? How could I betray his trust? I tried to put the whole idea out of my mind, and I really believe I would have too. But the very next morning I found the plastic Coke bottle washed up on the beach, and after that the idea of escape came back and haunted me day and night, and would not leave me be. For some days I kept the Coke bottle buried under the sand whilst I wrestled with my conscience, or rather justified what I wanted to do. It wouldn't really be a betrayal, not as such, I told myself. Even if the bottle was found, no one would know where to come. They'd just know I was alive. I made up my mind to do it, and do it as soon as I could. Kensuke had gone off octopus fishing. I'd stayed behind to finish a shell painting, or so I had told him. I found an old sheet at the bottom of one of his chests and tore away a small corner from it. Then I knelt down at the table, stretched it out, and painted my message on it in octopus ink. To the Peggy Sue, Fairham, England. Dear Mum and Dad, I am alive. I am well. I live on an island. I do not know where. Come and find me. Love, Michael. I waited until it was dry. Then I rolled it up and dug my coat bottle out of the sand, slipped in my message and screwed the bottle up tight. I made quite sure. Ken Sleep was still intent on his fishing and set off. I ran the entire length of the island, keeping always to the forest, so there was no chance Ken Sleep would see where I was going or what I was up to. The gibbons howled the accusations at me all the way, the entire forest cackling and screeching its condemnation. I just hoped Stella would not bark at them, would not betray where I was. Fortunately, she didn't. At last, I reached the rocks under Watch Hill. I leaped from rock to rock until I was standing right at the very end of the island, the waves washing over my feet. I looked around me. Stella was the only witness. I hurled the bottle as far out to sea as I possibly could. Then I stood and watched it as it bobbed away and out to sea. It was on its way. I didn't touch my fish soup that night. Ken Soup thought I was ill. I could hardly talk to him. I couldn't look him in the eye. I lay all night in deep torment, racked by my guilt, yet at the same time still hoping against hope that my bottle would be picked up. Ken Soup and I were at our painting the next afternoon when Stella came padding into the cave. She had the Coke bottle in her mouth. She dropped it and looked up at me, panting and pleased with herself. Ken Soup laughed and reached down to pick it up. I think he was about to hand it to me when he noticed there was something inside it. By the way, he looked at me. I knew for sure he knew at once what it was. Oh dear, that's the end of the chapter for today. I wonder if Ken Soup is going to forgive Michael. Right, I will see you tomorrow.